to perform blood ammonia test with Arcris latest instrument called Pocket Chem BA. So today friends I am going to show you how to perform a blood ammonia test with this latest uh, blood ammonia instrument. So I'll just quickly go through the instrument. So this is the instrument. So this is the instrument uh, from Arcrai, Japan. As you can see, it's called Pocket Cam BA. So this instrument has got a simple keypad to operate. So easy to operate and easy to carry because the instrument is very small, compact and lightweight and portable. You can see this is instrument uh, where we can easily even carry to the patient bedside. So the basic advantage is you can transfer, take the instrument to the patient bedside and take a finger prick sample and you can perform the results a blood ammonia test within 3 minutes 20 seconds so 3 minutes is a 3 minutes 20 seconds the total duration for getting the blood ammonia reports basically the problem with blood ammonia is that once you take out the sample you have to perform the test in a very short duration normally if this doesn't happen the blood ammonia values goes high uh, outside the range and which is not accepted routine biochemistry has another problem like once they open the test strips uh, means a test uh, reagent so these reagent has to be consumed within a short duration of time if you don't use they get spoiled but here there's an advantage that all the ammonia strips given along with the pocket can be a is individually aluminum foil packed and the beauty is that you need not even refrigerate these strips they can be just at a room temperature and this comes with a expiry of one and a half year 18 months on hand so the present strip so what i'm holding is 2014 07 2014 july and it every strip batch comes in a pack of 50 and they have particular code number like every batch will come with a different code number so this comes with a code number of f4 so I'll quickly go through it and I'll show you how the instrument is. This instrument is inbuilt with a thermal paper as you can see. So this is a thermal paper and at the back side there is a connectivity for power supply which takes only 7.5 volts. Along with the instrument there is an adapter provided which is for again 7.5 volts as you can see 7.5 volts and you can see uh, this back side is a port for connecting the adapter. And this is a paper feed button to so make sure the power supply is connected or not just press the button you see paper is working out so it means uh, it is connected so once it is connected the option is uh, i'll show you how the instrument is so it's a two-piece thing the upper part is a printer thermal printer and the lower part is actually instrument so you can have the instrument and you can carry it to the patient bedside and this holds the memory and once you come back you can again connect to the instrument with the printer and you can take out the readings anytime so this is the instrument so i'll quickly go through the keypad uh, this is the power supply button the blue one the orange one is for the canceling any option cancel button and the fact the zero button is for feeding the code number printed over the strip so every time you have a different batch number of strips so you need to feed into the code number and then perform the test without this you should not perform so this is one for paper feed two for memory and five for memory scroll up and down and then you have six for patient id and nine for quick test report and eight to give clock readings and seven for delete so i'll quickly go through the demonstration how to perform a test so this is connected and at the back side of this instrument as you can see this can be performed on two pencils also so there's no need uh, to look after the power supply every time so when you're going to the patient bedside you can carry this device perform the results take the reading and come back and connect to this printer and take the print out if you want else the reading can be reported onto the consent hospital or lab report pad so along with the instrument that is a because the sample requirement is very low so it's fixed 20 microliter pipette is provided 
you can see fit the instrument so this is a 20 microliter pipette and along with the instrument you can also see there's a small tray given to place the uh, test strip so this is to maintain the contact between the work area temperature which should not transfer to the strip so because temperature plays a very important role so this tray is provided and we have demo strips along with the instrument uh, sorry demo calibration strips so these are permanent calibration strips what you call it permanent magnetic calibration strips you can see this is for routine use okay so this is the magnetic area what you see the white area is a magnetic area so this has been some fixed values have been fixed so if the instrument reads them properly then the instrument is working fine or else you need to check what's going wrong and there is another reference strip provided with the instrument this is also again to double check the instrument calibration system so because as the instrument doesn't have any reagent calibration thing so this is a permanent strip with the values printed over it so while you're putting the calibration strip and running it you should get the range between 65 to 99 micromoles per liter so that ensures that your instrument is perfect and working correct and along with the instrument uh, there is a calibration there is a capillaries provided for drawing the blood sample from finger pick or if you are taking a venous sample then this pipette can be used the convenient method would be capillaries or as convenient you can go with the cap pipette also so these are the strips and this is the area where you need to place the sample strip this is area. this can be actually removed to clean this part and you can be replaced back like this and this is now so i'll quickly go through the this thing and i'll show you so with the help of a capillary we'll be actually performing a blood up on your test strip so how the how is the test strip actually looks like so i'll take out one strip and i'll show you so before feeding in the code number of the strip you need to first press this blue button right if you are in between switching on the instrument and this is this could happen so once you have switched on the instrument you can see uh, it shows the code number a uh, serial number as 66 and the code number is f4 now while you are performing the strips test strip you need to make sure the code number is perf uh, correct f4 now this patch has got code number f4 an expiry date is 2014 july it's long so to feed in the code number there is a fact button let me show you yeah the zero button is actually to feed in the code so i need to feed the code f4 press zero and then press two or five buttons to until you get f4 so i'll just like to show you one more thing the che is the check calibration strip as shown you earlier so these are the check calibration strips so while you are performing the calibration then you used to use this demo uh, calibration check strips and run the and run and sh uh, see it so this is the calibration check strips and this is the test strip so until you get the code number f4 you have to keep on pressing f10 f9 f8 f7 f6 5 f4 now once you have reached the say, code f4 you need to confirm it by pressing the blue corner button and showing the enter button press it now it's feed okay the code number has been feeded now what we need to uh, make sure is that if you want to uh, feed patient id number which is on the six button press six and then press the patient id number suppose patient id number one two three four five and then press enter so it is already feed serial number 66 patient id one two three four five so this is how done and now once the program has been done 
now you have to make sure that you take out one of the strip which is there uh, into this aluminium foil pack so there's a cut slot provided in one edge just tear straight to this and here you see there is a check strip so do not touch this this side of the uh, check strip because it has got one sample area so that should not be touched by your hands so take hold the other edge okay and place it over this tray so that it's not in contact with the okay so once this is here you have to take the blood sample with the help of a capillary so how do we store the blood sample is in cool pack samples has to be stored in ice cool packs like this so you have to carry a ice cool pack for storing the sample but make sure that this blood sample should be either edta sample or heparin sample these are the only two samples to be used other than these two no other samples you can use for blood ammonia particularly for this test only edta or heparin the, can be used for this test other than this anticoagulant any other anticoagulant should not be used <coughs> so i'll just take out the sample and we'll add up over this So I'll show you how to add the sample with a capillary. So we have to just press so that it sucks up the exact quantity of blood sample. Once it is sucked up, taking up the exact quantity of blood sample, you have to put it, put your finger on the top, and now I'll show you where to place this. Yeah. So while performing, make sure that you are placing the sample over this pad and without touching the pad, sample area pad. You should drop the sample so just leave your finger and keep on pressing the scapulary till it forms a hanging drop and once the drop is perfect place it in the center without disturbing your hands right have you seen the sample has been placed immediately you need to press the enter button so that the countdown starts So if the countdown is for 180 seconds which is actually 3 minutes so soon after this 3 minutes you need to remove the peeler which is actually connected like this so I'll just show you another peeler so this is how the this thing is so there's a peeler connected to the strip so once you peel it you will find a below part which is actually the reaction pad the below pad is a reaction pad which the color is changed so once the color is changed that particular color is being read by this instrument so precaution you need to take is one thing that while peeling off you should peel it very fast it's not slowly peeling but peel it in a very fraction of second so this peeling has to be in a very fast way and after peeling it you have to make sure that you reverse the strip and open the shutter of this instrument and you have to keep up to this blue line what you see here is blue line so up to this blue line you have to insert the strip and after that you'll find you'll get the results and that's how we actually measure so i'll just show you the countdown is running now 94 
so three minutes another three minutes another you can say one and a half minute more so during this time you should never open the shutter this outer shutter the shutter should not be touched or open for any reason so you cannot open at any cost if you open the whole timing gets disturbed and you don't get the results so you should never open this until this time you have to wait once the timer is over you will get a beep sound so you will have another 20 seconds of time to peel off the sticker and keep into the instrument so if you are not able to do in the in those 20 seconds so another you have option is you can go to this 9 button which is on the right corner and press 9 and then press enter and after inserting your strip press 9 and enter immediately the instrument reads even after that time you can perform that test you can get the results so this is how we actually do the blood ammonia test so it's the normal range uh, in the meantime i'll just show you another 10 seconds to go so normal range uh, is less than 54 so only two seconds so counter i'm peeling it off and reverse the chamber i'm reversing and keeping it till this blue mark and closing the shutter so you have seen i have closed the shutter till this blue mark value is 86 a little bit on higher end uh, because the blood sample what we have taken is actually this was taken in the morning and now I'm performing this test it's a late night so by the time because samples for blood ammonia should not be stored for a long time because they produce the results as you know so this was a, a demonstration as you have seen how we perform blood ammonia tests with uh, pocket kim ba from arc ray japan